Well, good morning. And it's Cassidy here. As always, as usual, as well, when you're getting one of these videos, you know it's me. I'm just checking a few things out. Um, I had a bug on my computer a, a few weeks back, and it was causing my microphone to shut off after like a couple of seconds. I, I think it cleaned it up. I had somehow gotten some malware on my computer. Computer. So I downloaded um, all bytes and cleaned up the computer and everything is fine now. Uh, at least my microphone isn't doing anything crazy yet. See, I'm sitting here watching it going, oh, look, where's my microphone? But yeah, it's good. Um, so what's happening today? This week has been probably the laziest week of writing I've done. Um, Biggest part was when I did my last recap on Monday, uh, TV recap, and I won't have to do another for like a few weeks. So I've actually got some vacation time away from that. But Tuesday, I was a wreck. Wednesday, I was a wreck. Uh, Thursday, I was still kind of semi-recovering. I was just could not get into it. And then last night was just lazing around. I only ended up writing about 200 words total. I just could not get in the proper mindset to get anything written. So I decided, oh, look. So um, I'm going to put a push. I have to get some things done today uh, that I want to do writing-wise. But at the same time, I have so much I have to do. I have to run to the post office. I have to run out and get groceries. I have to registered to vote, believe it or not, here I am. I've been working on a political campaign for almost two months now, and I have still not registered to vote. So I'm registering to vote today. And part of the reason I'm doing it here at home, I'm doing it online and I actually have to, um, excuse me, I have to do a, uh, take a picture of my signature and upload it so that they have it. It's, you know, you would think, hey, you know what I could do? I could just go over to the campaign office and register to vote. And I should, uh, but I'm crazy that way. Anyway, uh, Tuesday is the last day we have to actually register to vote. And since now, I have been asked to work at the phone bank two nights a week, as well as uh, working the Saturday and Sunday before the election. Because I was told that I'm now one of the most experienced phone bankers, yay me, uh, volunteer-wise who comes in and actually does this work. So <sighs> it's nice to be wanted. <laughs> yeah, it is in a way. It's kind of strange. But anyway, getting back to writing. Um, yeah, I've I've really had a lazy week this week. In fact. Even when I was sitting down last night, I was just sort of like, oh, man, I do not want to do this. I really didn't. I, I just, I could not get into the story. Uh, plus, also, when it gets to a certain time and I'm trying to type and my fingers aren't working right, you know, it's just like, uh, you get so frustrated that you don't want to continue on. So I just decided I got 200 words in. I said, oh, I can't handle this anymore. So I'm really hoping to have a much better day today. I am actually going to set aside some time to write this afternoon. And uh, I may actually finish up that scene with Carrie and Annie, or Annie and Carrie. I always say Annie first, it should. But I actually may finish up that scene. Because um, when I'm thinking about it, I know where the scene is going. And I really have to specify just a couple of other things. So I may actually finish that scene today. That would be great. And then I can start on the last scene of chapter three, which, by the way, is also, I believe, the last scene of part, is that part two, part one, part two. Let me check. I'm checking right now. Yes. Um, the next scene, Victoria and Bankman, is... Not only the last scene of chapter three, but it's the last scene of part one. And then we can move into part two, 
which is uh, Paul de Cantal de Paris. We will be to Paris. So it looks as if part one is going to top out somewhere around, hmm, maybe 45,000 words. Because right now I'm at 41,490. So almost 41,500. Uh, just 10 short. I should have done that last night. And this has been really kind of a big chapter. Uh, the first scene was actually 3,800 words. The second scene was almost 5,300 words. And now I'm at 2,500 words for this scene. So that's a lot. Uh, now when I pull it up, chapter two was the biggest. Chapter one was 14,800. Chapter two is just a little over 15,000 words. Right now I'm sitting at 11,006, and I figure that by the time I get done with this, this is going to be more or less likely around 13 to 14,000 words. So, um, yeah, kind of hefty. It's kind of hefty. It's it's looking good. It might help if I actually click on the right right one. And I have to admit, um, one of the things that I did in this last excerpt I published yesterday, Annie was was getting a little, I guess you could say, brazen. She was uh, putting some truth out there about things. And one of those things that she put out there was, uh, you know, she was making jokes about having kids. Uh, not so much having the kids, but conceiving them and she was joking about that and of course it seemed to have a reaction <laughs> with Carrie and really that's one of the directions I wanted to go in is that kids these age kids at that age especially in this day and age they're kind of more self-aware of themselves sexually I mean, Annie's going to be 14 in like a month. Ooh, she's so old and mature. But Annie is a, a rather mature girl for her age. And Carrie is getting there. And Carrie's even joking about the fact, hey, you shouldn't say stuff like that, you know? It's kind of dangerous. And that's really, the f really kind of the second time I've made reference to the fact that they are kind of aware of their own sexuality. They're all kind of aware that... They're maturing sexually as well as physically. It kind of makes it interesting. Um, as people have always, well, not always, but as people have kind of indicated in the past, this book isn't just about magic. It's about two kids coming of age in really kind of a, a crazy, almost sometimes crappy way. I mean... You know, they've both suffered broken bones. Uh, well, Annie has only suffered broken bones one time. But, uh, you know, you never know what's going to happen next. But uh, Annie's been in the hospital. Carrie's been in the hospital. You know, they've, they've had hard times. Annie knows that there's some rough times coming. <laughs> and that's partially what the next scene is going to do, uh, take care of. Once this scene is done, uh, the two are going to actually talk about kind of their future coming up at Salem. Because remember, it's only been a couple of days since Carrie had that long, huge discussion with Annie. And he probably hasn't written to her about it yet. Or if he has the letters in transit and she hasn't seen it. So uh, it's going to be interesting. These kids, they go through so much crap. <laughs> they will. Before it's all said and done, they are just going to go through so much crap. It's not even going to be funny. <sighs> My poor kids. <laughs> and at the end of it, you just want them to have a happy ending and go off and have oodles of little witches like Annie seems to want. You know, and that's, that's the thing. She wants... 
she's in a way uh, she's kind of like her mother her mother wanted a family her mother wanted to have it all um, Carolina wanted a husband she wanted a family but she also wanted a career and she found that after having Annie she just had to kind of work hard at juggling all of these and decided, you know, one of the best things to do would be to just have one kid and I can keep her at home and I'll work from home and we'll have good mother-daughter times together. You know, it's going to be that, that great. And they actually do. I mean, the nice thing with Pavlina's job is that she can set her own time. You know, she'll have deadlines to meet and she can meet those if she wants. So she sets her own times, and then it's like, well, I want to work from 7 in the morning until 10 o'clock, and then uh, Annie and I are going to head off to Paris or Berlin or, you know, Rome or someplace like that and have lunch. And that really is kind of like how Annie's life has been, you know. Um, sometimes they'll have lunch at home, and then sometimes mom will be like, hey, let's go shopping in Paris. And they jaunt off to Paris, and they spend uh, lunchtime there, and then they spend the afternoon shopping before they come home. So, And a lot of this is easy to do because the father, Victor, he's not home a lot. Uh, he's normally out on the road. I mean, he can jaunt back and forth, but he's in a position where it's difficult for him to do that simply because, you know, you have to maintain that illusion that specifically if I'm a thousand kilometers away, I can't. I can't just show up, you know, at home and hope somebody doesn't see me. Uh, that's the thing. It, they do have sort of a secluded lifestyle, which allows him to do that. And you notice if you go all the way back to the first novel, when he came to see Annie off on her first day going to Salem, you know, he told the team, I'm not, I'm not really feeling well, I'm going to lock myself in my bedroom for a couple of hours, and then he jaunted home, and then they took Annie to London, and then he probably jaunted back to the bedroom, you know, it was, it's that simple. But, um, yeah, that, the sexuality thing is, it's going to kind of rear its ugly head just a little in this episode, in this novel because they are getting they are going to get frustrated let's face it you know they are going to get frustrated they're at that point where if it wasn't for this thing that happened to them in the b-level novel um there would be a very good possibility that sometime during this novel um, they probably end up losing their virginity to each other and they'd really be a married couple walking around the school going, oh, look at this, look at this, look at this. <laughs> I have that glow of a girl who just lost her virginity. To it. Getting death stares from everyone. Um, but yeah, that's, they get this thing going on where it's like, it's, Annie's like her mom. She wants it all. Yes, I could I could have sex, but then I may not ever find out what sort of like great powers I would get from the three bindings if I do. <laughs> I gotta hold off. Please let me hold off. Please let me hold off. Please let me hold off. And Annie does seem to actually be the more aggressive of the two. If you notice, Carrie it he just kinda lays back and he deals with things. Whereas Annie is more open about discussing that sort of stuff. And she does seem to be the aggressive one. She really is. Which is the way I like her. You know, she's, she's, a take, she's a take charge girl. Sure, Carrie will probably be later. I think Carrie's greatest fear, and it's something you're going to find in the novel, is that if he decides to be the aggressor, he may have a hard time stopping, um, you know, self-control issues there. You know how guys are. I wouldn't know. Trust me, before the change, I was a completely different person. I really was. Um, and I don't even like to admit those things, but, yeah. I, 
So I was not only the I was not always the nicest of people. So. But now I traded in that card for my my woman card, and I'm a completely new individual, and I understand all that stuff, especially since sometimes I did that crap. Anyway, but we won't. There's one other thing I'm, I'm doing too. I mean, besides doing political stuff and doing strange things in the camera this morning, um, you, you can't see it, but I'm actually trying to grow my hair out again. Um, most of you are probably not aware. I think some of you are. Most of you are probably not aware that I wear wigs. Yeah, sometimes it's pretty obvious, especially when like one day I take a picture and I'm a blonde and the next day I take a picture and I'm, uh, you know, a ginger and my hair's down to my shoulders, whereas my blonde hair was real close to my head. And that's because you know, naturally before the change, I started suffering from male pattern baldness. But now I've been on oh, nearly almost two and a half years of estrogen. And I've noticed that while my widow's peaks here are not coming back the way, there was, I had a, a fairly large open spot here in the back, and I noticed there's fuzz on there now. There's actually like hair coming in. It's light and stuff. And I was sitting there thinking, why don't I just grow it out and see what's going to happen because I have several friends online on Facebook who work in um, salons and they've told me before grow your hair out because you'd be surprised with like with partial caps and things like that, of that nature they can actually take a person with, with thinning hair or with bald patches and fix you up so that you even look as if it's all natural. So I decided, you yeah, know, I'm going to give this a shot. I'd like to see what I would look like with my natural hair. Uh, it's probably going to take months before it ever gets down to, like, this level. Uh, it may actually take as much as a year. And there could be a point where um, I actually put hair extensions in to pull my hair down a little bit. Also, one of the things you're going to see, my hair is like almost completely white. It's whitish gray. And that's going to be kind of freaky the first time people see it. So I, at some point, if I can do something with this, I will have it colored. I mean, you know, I'm going to stick with the ginger. I like ginger. I should have been a ginger in, in another life. I was abused for it too, because I was probably in England, and you know we don't like we don't like those gingers. Except I'm sounding like I'm Scottish here. But yeah, I'm going to grow my hair out. Um, it's probably going to look a little funky with the wig, and now I'm, I'll have to start like wearing a wig cap and stuff like that. And maybe when my hair gets longer, I actually begin pinning it down and everything else, which is going to be a pain in the butt. But if it looks good and we can actually do something about the areas where it's not the best, uh, I'll actually go with that. Uh, start just using my normal hair. Because that's one thing I haven't done in a long time is actually wash my own hair. There's no hair to wash. And shaving my head gets to be a pain in the butt. I had electrolysis to remove most of my beard. It's not all gone. But, you know, shaving is now just pretty much confined to this part right here. With a little bit under the chin. But shaving my head is a pain in the butt. I've cut myself so many times. And it's kind of weird to look at yourself in the mirror <laughs> when you still get your makeup on. And your earrings are in and you don't have your wig on and there's this bald head. And it's kind of weird to look at. Um, I look like Liz Taylor from American Horror Story uh, Hotel. Which uh, Michael O'Hare just, he nailed that part. I love that. He did a great job with it. But um, yeah, we'll see. 
one of these days I'm going to do a video and I'm going to pull my wig off and you're going to see my real hair for once. Uh, uh, that's going to be a freaky part. But one of the things I'm going to start doing is checking with the salons in this area. And I think the one from where I got my wig, um, they actually, not this wig, I actually bought this wig online. The last wig I bought from this place, I wasn't happy with it. It actually started coming apart. The only problem is, um, I spent about $150 on this wig, and it's it, there's actually bits and pieces of it that are starting to come apart, and I can't style it. It's a heat-resistant wig that I'm supposed to be able to style, and I can't. It, it just doesn't want to. I even bought a curling iron. And this was kind of the thing that, you know, I spent the week before this, believe it or not, I spent $400. And that gets expensive when you think about it. If you're buying synthetic wigs and you have to buy a couple of year, a couple of year, that's 600 bucks easily. You know, 500 to $600. And that's a hit I really can't afford to be taking. I'd love to get a human hair wig, but they're only good for about three years max. And then you're in a position where you got to get another one. And believe it or not, a human hair wig will set you back about a grand easily. So even when you prorate it out, you're still spending about three or $400 a year on that wig. You're spending anywhere from 300 to 500 actually, depending on how long you have it. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see. I was, I liked it when I had long hair. I used to have really nice hair. It's kind of thin now, but uh, grow it out. Maybe, maybe with the estrogen treatments and maybe I'll even pick up some female Rogaine and see how that works. I've actually had some people say that female Rogaine will work with me, especially, you know, with my hormone levels being up as high as they are it actually might start hair promote hair growth uh, better. So we'll see. All new and exciting. So I have packages to pick up. I have food to buy. I have writing to do. I have promised I will not watch TV until late tonight. Uh, you know, that is the goal I'm setting for myself. No Netflix until later tonight. At which point I'll finish up Luke Cage, because I've only got two episodes to go. So I will finish up Luke Cage, but the goal I'm setting is not until after 7 o'clock tonight. So that's it, you know, boom. I have writing in the afternoon, maybe I'll go out and get dinner, walk down the street and grab a bite to eat, and then um, that's it. That's what I have, my goals. I have my goals. Listen to some music, do some writing, finish this get done and tomorrow I'm taking one of the girls from the headquarters and I'm getting her nose pierced <laughs> yeah I'm taking her out she wants to get her nose pierced and she's afraid to go do it by herself so I said I'll go take her I'll take her to the same place I had mine done and you know I'll hold her hand while she's getting her nose drilled so aren't I nice this is what girls do for one another you know oh I'll hold your hand just I, I, you know, just, just hold my hand and squeeze as tight as you want while they shove a needle through your flesh, which is really what they did with me. So, yeah, that's how they do it. Uh, they stuck a, a tube up my nose and then poked a needle through my nose and then put the, put the ring in, or put the, the stud in. That's how they did it with me, except mine is permanent. Uh, it actually has to be unscrewed if I want to take it out, or I could just, like, grab it and yank it through the skin, and I don't want to do that. Ow! That would hurt. That would really hurt. Uh, that would be super, super, super painful. So we're coming up here uh, 40 seconds ago before 25 minutes. I'm acting goofy. Look at this. See, this is, you know, the hair just drives me crazy. Look at that. See? There we go. It just drives me crazy sometimes. So... Um, still waiting on my covers. Big surprise. I'm about ready to find somebody else to do my covers for me because I'm getting tired of waiting. So, and I won't go all that money I spent on covers, but.
Lesson learned. So, five, four, three, two, see you around. Bye.